Timeline fluency, review all year, and A star. You need your history notebook. As you watch the video, complete the timeline in your notebook. Pay attention to the speaker because you'll be asked to place special symbols on the paper to prove that you are watching it. The teacher will tell you where to place the symbols. If you do not have these symbols on your timeline, you will not receive credit for completion. You must watch the video and complete the tasks. All right, our timeline, let's use it to review. The first thing we need to do is draw the timeline. Make sure you're paying attention throughout this because I'll give you some secret symbols to add to your paper. All right, so I drew my timeline. If I remember the mnemonic phrase, it becomes very easy for me to fill in the events. So here we go, we say my cat just vomited purple marshmallows after riding carousels licking purple colored water. There we go. My cat just vomited purple marshmallows after riding carousels licking purple colored water. All right, and so we're gonna use that to fill in our map. And so we are gonna start with the Magna Carta, which is in 1215. JV stands for Jamestown, Virginia. Anytime I write Jamestown, I wanna change that S into a dollar sign, so it can remind me economic, and that is in 1607. PM is gonna be Plymouth. Massachusetts, and I'm going to change that T to a cross, and I'm going to label that as 1620. AR is none other than our American Revolution. It starts July 4th, 1776, and it ends in 1783. C stands for Constitution, and this is, of course, the unit we are on, 1787. So why don't you for me right now? Give me a heart right up there because this is the unit that we are on. Go ahead and draw a heart right above 1787. That's the unit we are on. Make sure you have our secret symbols so you can get credit. LP is Louisiana Purchase, and that doubles the size of the United States in 1803. And CW is Civil War, which starts in 1861, and it ends in 1865. All right, so it's not enough to just have the events. We have to be able to connect the events, and we have quite a few things for us to make sure that we know. So starting with Magna Carta, Magna Carta gives us the idea of limited government, that our leaders cannot just do whatever they want. They are limited, and who are they limited by? They are limited by the people. This idea is gonna be added into our Constitution right there. We're gonna talk about it as one of the principles, one of the main foundations of our government. But it goes all the way back to the Magna Carta in 1215 and then to the colonists that came in 1607 to Jamestown, Virginia. Because when they showed up in Jamestown, Virginia, they said, okay, we have limited government. That is our English right. We are gonna to add to it with the idea of representative government we know they have representative government because they had the House of Burgesses um, in which they elected representatives to serve the people and be a voice of the people. And in 1620 in Plymouth, Massachusetts, when those Puritans, let's not forget the Puritans, who showed up, they said, okay, we have limited government. We know that that is our English right. We also have representative government because that comes from Jamestown, and we're gonna add to it with the idea of self-government. We're gonna take it upon ourselves to have this self-government. What self-government do they specifically have? Well, democracy, the voice of the people, and we know they get that because they, of course, signed the Mayflower Compact before they exited the ship. Now, technically, were they supposed to have any of these things? Of course not. But the king does not stop them. He kind of ignores them. And what is it called? 
because he ignores them, it is called salutary neglect. Now the question is why? Why is he ignoring them? Well, because he is too far. He's too far to really enforce any of the rules that they have going on in England. And so these colonists, even though they're English colonies, are kind of used to doing their own thing. Of course, something is going to change it all. What is going to change it all? It is going to be none other than the French and Indian War. The French and Indian War is the war that changes everything. And so that takes us into our American Revolution. We have two things to help us know our American Revolution. One of them is, of course, going to be the causes. We have a mnemonic phrase to help us remember the causes. And that mnemonic phrase is going to be Nate Smith. Saves quarters. Ooh, I'm going to switch my pen out real quick. Saves quarters daily to buy better iPhones. Whew, that's a lot. Nate Smith saves quarters daily to buy better iPhones. And so those are our causes right there. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means the Navigation Act. You can only trade with England. Of course, that doesn't really happen. We continue to smuggle stuff in. We then get our Sugar Act, which says we're going to pass a tax on sugar and molasses, but we continue smuggling stuff in. Well, the next one is going to be our Stamp Act. This one really upsets the colonists because it is a tax on printed materials. Let's go ahead right here and give me a star right next to Stamp Act because that really upsets our colonists. Give me a star right there so I know that you are following along and paying attention. All right. After the Stamp Act, to really make sure our colonists are following rules, the king passes the Quartering Act. He says, you have to provide housing and shelter to the soldiers. And the colonists are like, what? And the king says, they're just there to protect us. And we're like, no, they're not. They want to spy on us. And then we get to the ultimate law, the Declaratory Act, declaring that you must follow the law. It's the law to follow laws. So are you breaking one law? Or two laws. Hmm, something to think about. Not really fair. Goes against limited government and the Magna Carta. Then we get the Townsend Act, which is an indirect tax collected at seaports. Um, a tax on glass, lead, paper, paint, tea, anything coming from England on a ship. The merchants will actually pay it, which what causes what happens at the stores, then the price is going to go up. So give me a little dollar sign, dollar, dollar, for that tax right there. Well, colonists are getting upset. They're getting more and more upset. That leaves us into the Boston Massacre. Of course, we all know the first person killed in the Boston Massacre. His name is Crispus Attucks. He is the first person that is killed there. We do need to recognize that name and know it because he becomes a martyr, a hero for the people. The fact that he was killed by those British soldiers. And then the next one is the Boston Tea Party. The Sons of Liberty in an act of civil disobedience board those ships and dump the tea into the Boston Harbor. That results in our intolerable acts. The colonists cannot tolerate what the king is doing to them. He closes the port of Boston. He says you have to pay back. He shuts down town meetings. He sends more soldiers. The colonists are not happy at all. And so that brought us to our first Continental Congress meeting after the Intolerable Acts, which then takes us to our V. Everybody draw your V. Now, we had a little bit of a contest to remember the events that are on our V timeline. And so the mnemonic phrase, that one that's going to help us remember these events are going, is, are going to be, sorry, it's let's devour some, let's devour, oh, some, okay, some very, Yummy tacos. 
let's devour some very yummy tacos. And so those are my letters. Let's devour some very yummy tacos. And so that's gonna help us remember the events of the revolution. We do it on the V because we start up at the top. We're feeling really good. We kind of don't do very well and we're sinking down about to lose and we have a turning point battle which brings us back up to the top. All right. When we say let's, we are talking about the battles of Lexington and Concord, the shots heard round the world. See how I made that rhyme? Doesn't really rhyme, but we try to make it work. So Lexington and Concord, the shots heard round the world. Those are the start of a revolution. All right, with Lexington and Concord, our American Minutemen stand up to those British soldiers who are trying to capture the rebel leaders and any guns that we had. That leads to the Second Continental Congress meeting and then writing the Declaration of Independence. Notice we're not at the top. We weren't 100% positive that we would win. And so the Declaration of Independence will win together or we will hang together. As Benjamin Franklin says, it's July 4th, 1776. Unfortunately for us, through much of the beginning of the war, we are not doing very good. This turning point battle that we do win at is going to be the Battle of Saratoga. Um, that battle, because we win, Ben Franklin is in France, and he is able to, help, to convince them to send aid. We get help from the French, and so we call them Frenchy Franklin because he convinces the French to help us. And so we are going to spend that next winter at Valley Forge training. Our soldiers are going to train to become better. Some of them die. It is also known as the winter, winter of red snow. But they train to become better. Our battle that we really win at is going to be none other than Yorktown, where we have a major victory and capture much of the British army. And the war is officially going to end at the top. See how I did that right there? At the top with the Treaty of Paris, 1783, signed by the British and England, uh, uh, American representatives, signed by the British and American representatives in Paris to end the war. And so we have, during the war and right under, we are going to be under a government called the Articles of Confederation, right there. My Articles of Confederation. Now, the Articles of Confederation works during the war. It does have some strengths. Those strengths, of course, we remember them with upholds, which stands for Union, Post Office, Have Treaties, Ordinances, Laws, 9 out of 13, declare war and sell land so they can raise money. And so our strengths, our good things, we'll add a little smiley face right there, is helps us remember with upholds. But even with the good comes the bad. And how do we remember it? Well, we have the acronym PAX. And there is my sad face. And so we have no president, no army, no courts on the federal level, no taxation for the federal level, so we can't pay back people, and that's gonna result in states arguing. And so that, of course, then gives us Shays Rebellion and takes us into the Constitution.